Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to CRM Tip of the Day's Video Tips, your source for tips and step-by-step -step instruction on the latest version of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So in this video, we're going to go ahead and keep exploring kind of the new CRM 2016 spring update features, particularly looking at the new mobile offline functionality. So you know, in previous versions, you've had draft modes where you could kind of create new records while you were sitting offline. The problem that you ran into with that is you could only create new records and there wasn't kind of an automatic synchronization capability when you went back online. So you truly didn't have kind of a new a mobile experience. Now with the new spring update with the mobile offline access, you do actually have the capabilities to take this information offline when you're working through it. There's a couple of things you have to keep in mind though before we delve too far into it. You, it is only available for CRM online. So you have to be an online customer and you have to have at least five CRM professional licenses or at least one one enterprise online license associated with your organization. The other thing you have to keep in mind is just because you have them, you also have to make sure you're using them. So all of your license need to be assigned for, to a specific user in your organization before you can go in and enable the offline mobile synchronization. If you don't have those licenses assigned, CRM is not going to recognize that and you won't be able to use the feature. The other thing is, is that right now it's only available to you for production instances. So if you have a trial instance or or you have a preview or a sandbox instance that you're working with, it's not going to give you the capabilities to use this functionality in those options when you're going through. Now, if you are using offline draft, the offline draft experience will still be there. And so you'll still have the opportunity to work with it from there. This feature or this service, it, it only does kind of periodic synchronization. So when it goes through, it actually cycles through the information based upon what's kind of happened within the last several minutes, depending upon kind of what's happening within the Azure network itself. The other thing is if you have items where, you know, user security missions change or anything like that, that's also going to be reflected when it goes in through kind of the next life cycle when you're going through. But it uses and it's back-ended through Azure in order to make this process work. So let's just go ahead. We'll hop in real quick and we'll take a look at some of the, the features and functionality around it. So let's take a look at what this looks like from an application standpoint. If I go into settings and administration, I'll see an option for mobile offline configuration. When I click on mobile offline configuration, this will take me into the area that will enable it for the organization as a whole. When I click on continue, it'll give me an option to define what I want to do. I'll basically click enable and then save. And this will enable the offline uh, capabilities for my organization, assuming that I have all of my criteria met. And if I don't, if I don't have all my user licenses assigned, it's not even going to let me into this option. Once I've enabled it, then I can go into settings and mobile offline. And this is where I can define what specific pieces I want to work with. Now, from a mobile offline configuration standpoint, if I click on that, that's pretty much going to bring me right back to where I went into where I enabled the functionality. So once it's enabled, there's not a lot that you have to do with it at an organization level. The mobile offline settings is where for an organization, you can kind of define what you want to work with when you take things offline. So this is where I can define what the main profile is that is going to be used for my organization or the default mobile profile when I'm going offline. Each user has to belong to a profile or each user that's going offline has to belong to a profile. And then in that profile, it defines what specific entities and data information will actually be taken offline when they work with it. If I go into mobile offline profiles, this is where I can add a new profile. So if I were to go in, for example, and click on new, this would allow me to create a new profile. And here I have one that I've kind of just started to create that I just kind of called tip of the day. So now in this scenario, I can go ahead, once I've defined the profile, the key factor in this is I need to define what specific items I'm going to take offline and what associations are going to be made with those items when I'm taking them offline. And it breaks down into a, into a couple of different scenarios. It's based upon the entity type that you're working with. So let's just call this accounts. We'll specify this as the account entity. 
And then I've got a couple of different options. So depending upon what type of entity it is. So if it's a user or team owned entity, you have certain options available to you when you're bringing it down. If it's an organization owned entity, you have certain options that you can bring down. So there's different scenarios based upon what type of entity it is that you're working with. So being that this is a user or a team owned entity, I could do download related data only, which is really going to make related data for this entity available for you to download as part of the information. You do have to go in and set up the relationships with the related data. So if I want to take on, you know, like the contacts and any related contacts or the accounts and related contacts, I would have to specify the relationship with accounts and contacts so it knows what specific information to bring down from an application standpoint. If I want to bring all records down, then I can basically go ahead and, rec and select all records and this will bring all the records for this entity available. The other option that I can do is there's an other data filter, and this is where I can determine if I wanted to bring down only my records, if I wanted to bring down uh, records for teams that I belong to or records that are associated with the business that I belong to. So it depends upon what specific you know, needs are from a organization standpoint in regards to what items you're going to bring down. Again, if I choose to go ahead and select that I want to do related data only, once I save this, then I would have to go in and define what specific relationships with that related data I want to bring down. So then I would come into here, I would select kind of my offline profile association, and maybe I would call this related specify my relationship. So what's the relationship that I want to work with? I want to work with the relationship between contacts and then I can go ahead and hit save and close on this and that'll bring that information down. Now rather than walking through and saving all this and, and working with information from here, let me close out of this profile real quick. And let me open up one that is enabled automatically or ships kind of automatically with an application standpoint. So this is kind of a sample service one. So this one has already got some items defined into what it's bringing down from an offline perspective. So it's got the account entity, the contact entity, the entitlement entity, and that it's specified kind of other data filter for that information. So when I open up the account one, I can see that it specified this to only bring down my records, which ultimately is what you would be looking at in most cases where you just want the user to have access to their data, keeping in mind that you know all that data is going to take some additional time to synchronize when you're working through it. Once you have the profile set up and you've defined what specific items and details you want to work with in the profile, now it's time to designate what specific users will actually have access to this mobile profile. So this is where you would go into your users area, locate a specific user that needs to have access to it, and then define those users from there. Once the user has been defined and everything is set up from a profile perspective, now it's ready for you to go ahead and publish this. And so I can go ahead and click on publish, and this is gonna publish that mobile profile and the profile items. And the next time that I connect with the mobile application from my user account, that's gonna go ahead and start to download all of that information basically from an Azure service. And so in that Azure service, it'll download that information and start to make copies of that information. So if I lose connectivity or if I decide to take the mobile application offline, all of that information is going to be there. If you're an organization that has a heavy work, mobile workforce and you run into situations where you know they don't have connectivity all the time or they're working in areas where they need to be taking information offline, this is a welcome addition. It now really gives people the capabilities to have full access to the different activities that they would need to be doing through the mobile application, whether they're connected to the internet or they're not connected. This is something that I would highly recommend looking at and kind of testing. Now, the one issue with this as opposed to some of the other items that we've shown you in past videos is you don't have the luxury of bringing this into a trial organization or a sandbox environment and truly kind of taking it for a trial run. You have to look at it from a production standpoint and would have to enable it in a production instance so you can truly start testing and working with the information from there. But it's very easy to set up and configure. It's highly tailor tailorable based upon what it is that you're working with. Would be able to work with custom entities or any type of item as long as it's been enabled for the offline experience. Experience. So I would highly recommend at least going in and playing with some of the different options and seeing what you can do with it from there. So I hope you enjoyed kind of our quick look into mobile offline data. Again, for all of us here at CRM Tip of the Day, this has been Derek saying thanks for watching, everybody. Take care and have a good one.